<laughs> this is not an emergency meeting. This is a reality check now for all clubs, right? Yeah. Just putting a banter aside for a second, right? We've been saying this for time. Putting a banter aside for a second that Manchester City are so far ahead now of every club. So even when I'm looking at it, I was, I was looking at it last night, I got home, watched Match of the Day and that, and I'm looking at it and thinking, what do we need to add to catch them? Probably. Big question. Big, big question here from Robbie. This is in the video where he is asking the question and suggesting that the Premier League has become a farmer's league. City are too dominant. Nobody can catch them. Do you agree? That is my first point to you. Do you agree? I want to know now in the comments section, my people. Of course, hit the like and the share button. And remember, there's a week left in the raffle. You've got one week to enter to win two tickets to the FA Cup final and £250 spending money. Scan the QR code on the screen or click on the link in our description below now to sign up. But has the Prem become a farmer's league? Or is Robbie, is Robbie a little bit bitter here? You know, Robbie the other day saying that Arsenal were above Carabao Cups. Is he a little bit bitter? Is he trying to make Arsenal's collapse at the end of the season feel less painful by suggesting that it's impossible to beat this Manchester City side? I want to get your view on this. It's an interesting question from him. And the reason that I bring it up is this. Look, City now are accumulating more points than teams of years gone by. But squads are bigger. Squads are thicker. Five substitutions are allowed. So not only can they accumulate more points, they can rotate more in-game, rotate more out-of-game, or in between games to maintain physical prowess. It doesn't take away from it being a fantastic, brilliant City team. But of course, they're catch up. Of course they can be cool. Of course they can be cool. All of our clubs have owners that can invest like the Sheikh does. People say, but they're state-owned. But they can't pump billions of pounds a year in. They're limited to a hundred million pound of investment for players per year. How much have the Cronkies, how much of the Glazers, how much of FSG invested of their own money into their respective football clubs in the last decade? Nowhere near as much as the Sheikh. So that's first thing, demand your owners invest money. Secondly, have the best, very best people in the football world come in, come in to run your club available. Thirdly, get rid of sentiment, be goddamn ruthless and buy better players than what you've got now. Develop better players than you've got now. Not, oh, you know, we've got to keep playing Rashford. We've got to keep playing Saka. We've got to keep playing Henderson because we love them, because they've done good in the past, because we think they're going to become a superstar. You buy better, you develop better, you drop sentiment, have the best people around running your club, and you demand investment. This is no farmer's league. It's the most competitive league in the world. We just have a team right now in Man City who are one of the greatest English sides of all time. Arsenal went through this with Man United in the 90s. We won this many league titles in the same time period in the 90s. Liverpool in the 70s and 80s did the same thing. All those teams have had their day. All those teams have fallen off. It is not beyond the realms of possibility that other clubs could do it. You've just got to spend and be and spend well through operating correctly. It's as simple and as straightforward as that for me. But what do you all think below uh, in relation to that? They can only match what Man United did. Yeah. Right? And here's the, here's, here's the statement that will override that. Do you remember when Brian Clough said to Don Revy, I want to do what you did, but I want to do it better right <laughs> so this is the sentiment if they go to the champions league final and they don't eke past Bayern munich with two goals in the last two minutes and they smash milan you see straight away here eke past Bayern munich belittling man united's achievement and four nil right like they've just smashed madrid yeah and they win the fa cup you know with great pomp and they run away with the league then you're going to have this argument to say we did what you did but we did it better I understand where he's coming from. First, I'm going to say this now. I've seen all the media outlets today say this City team is better than Man United's treble winning team. My first statement is this. Win the treble first. You've got to win the treble first. You may well do it. 99% certainty of winning the Premier League. 74% certainty of winning the FA Cup. Sorry, the Champions League. And 79% certainty of winning the FA Cup, according to the odds checker today. But go and do it first. Then we have this conversation. But you see what Simon Jordan did there, and it's disgraceful? Eked past Bayern Munich. The Bayern Munich team Man United played in 1999 is considerably better than the Inter Milan team that's in the final this year. 
without a shadow of a doubt. The Juve team Man United beat in the semi-finals in 1999 is better, in my opinion, than this current Real Madrid team, who are the dying embers of a great Real Madrid team. They're very good, but they're not a great side like that Juve team were. Man United's group stage back in 99 had Barcelona, who were brilliant then, and Bayern Munich, who were brilliant then, in it. I'm taking nothing away from this Man City, Man City team. They're great. But you know, when you have to start playing down how good other teams were, belittling their achievements, making it sound like we scraped our way to win trophies, that we didn't play against any quality. By the way, we beat one of the greatest Arsenal teams of all time to a league title as well. So yes, we didn't run away with the league, but that Arsenal team was better than this year's Arsenal team. And I'm sick and tired of seeing Man United's historic achievements being downplayed. It's absolutely okay if you believe that this City team is, it could be crowned as a better side. But just state that on its merits as opposed to putting down Man United because you lose the argument for me. Secondly, rival fans are, are joyous about this. I'm going to put this out there for the first time today. For years, we, uh, Chelsea fans, Liverpool fans, Arsenal fans are all shown to be liars today. Because I've sat on streams, I've sat in debates for years where they've said, the 99 team not the best team in England. The Liverpool team under Paisley was better. The Arsenal Invincibles are the greatest English team of all time. Jose's back-to-back title-winning team of the greatest team of all time. But now so many from those fan bases are coming together to say, Man City are number one. They're surpassing Man United's 99 team. So at least we know we won that debate for the last 20-plus years, that we, were, we are the Man United right now, 99 team, the greatest English team of all time. But for this City team to surpass it, They've got to go and do it. I think it is disrespectful to crown them as better, crown them as superior, crown, crown their achievements as um, vastly superior before they've done it. Win it first. They may very well do it. But how dare you crown them as better before they've lifted those trophies? How dare you? How the, how the X Man United Why are you lads? In a red suit? Yeah, United can we can we mic him? <laughs> Jamie, give him. And and by the way, he's one game left. So okay. don't celebrate yet. You didn't win yet. So calm down, relax. Oh, tranquilo. Tranquilo, like they say the Italian tranquilo. Did you, one game left. Did you have a Listen, I love what Patrice ever said here, by the way. This clip from CBS is amazing. Go and check it out. And that's my sentiment here. City are great, praise them. But the way football celebrating like they've achieved the treble, yeah, it's crazy to me. Go and do it first. They very may well do it. But you've got to go and achieve it first. I'm seeing Man United get so much shit today. You haven't even matched their achievement yet. When you've matched it, then we'll go through why ours is better, why yours is better. We'll have that debate. Football fans can decide. But until you've achieved it, like I've said, stop. Please stop. <laughs> Courtois made two, arguably three, world-class saves and Man City probably missed a couple of chances they were expected to score. So it easily could have been 8-0. Um, Man City were immaculate, fantastic. I don't know where they're getting that energy from in the middle of May after this ridiculous season, by the way. I mean, I can't believe how driven and intense they were and the distances they covered this late in the season. You've got to give huge credit to Pep Guardiola on how he manages his squad to be able to keep that level of fitness. We've seen teams like Arsenal, you know, fall away, Man United fall away this season from the, you know, amount of games. And, and the amazing point here by Goldbridge, and it goes on, it's one of the greatest things that City team do, the, the management of that squad is, is impeccable. But that's what happens when you have great sports science, great diets, a big, deep squad that you rotate regularly. Remember, Fergie invented rotation in the 90s he, sh he demonstrated to people this is how you win multiple trophies in a season including the big ones you have to rotate you have to take risks the difference is now in 2023 because of the successes of the Vengas, the fergies the Josies, jose Mourinho's, because the, the league has grown so much and there's so much money here now through the tv rights the big teams have the capability and by the way we go back to what we spoke about with robbie this is full circle on this video how do you catch them you invest like they do in their squad. You build a big squad. You make sure it fits the manager's philosophy. You allow that manager to be ruthless with that squad and control it. You bring in the best people around him, sports scientists, doctors, nutritionists, footballing directors, to run the football operation. You get bankers and businessmen out of the football decision-making sphere and you create a colossus team. 
what Pep Guardiola is doing, his style of football is amazing. But what he is doing in terms of winning the way he does is a continuation of what we saw in the 90s from the Man United, what we saw the, the, the Inters and the Barcelonas do in the Bayern Munich. And they're just taking it to another level. The evolution of sport will always do this. It's why the points totals are things I don't overly focus on. I look at the practice and the process and the achievements. But what Goldbridge has brought up here is amazing. They managed their squad impeccably. When they were slow at the begin earlier on in the season, maybe that was by choice. Maybe by choice they were not playing at 100% intensity in all games. Maybe. Maybe it was just a case of, you know what, go for it, guys. Win, but don't break your backs. Don't place your optimum now because we're going to need that in the back end of the season. There is an element of risk in that, but you have to do it. When a boxer gets into the ring, very rarely in the first two or three rounds do they unleash and unleash everything they've got because they can exhaust themselves in the latter rounds. You have to be meticulous, but brave. Careful, but you know, you, it's right. You don't want to be careless, but you don't want to be too careful either. You've got to get the balance absolutely right. I've got that one wrong. But it's a great point by Mark who's brought up there. And that is an area that this City team needs praise for. And I don't think Pep gets enough praise for his rotation and ability to maintain his squad's fitness. That's what I've always said in the past. And I mean, true to it. If they, if they achieve this, it may get crowned the greatest English achievement of all time. We'll have that debate. But it's certainly going to be number one or number two. Because winning these three trophies, the three biggest trophies available in one season is the hardest thing to do. More important than points totals, more important, more, more important than any going unbeaten. It's immaculate. I want to get your thoughts and feelings on this, though, on what Patrice Ever has said. Should they stay calm? Is it right to crown this City team the greatest team of all time? And is this now a Farmers League? I think Robbie's gone a little bit mad with this take, but I want your thoughts and I want your feelings. Remember to enter the Football Terrace raffle as well. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon. Peace.